Hello travelers, I'm Chris. Welcome to Lore Spire. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a heavy armored high AC tank. Previously, I've shown how to do this as a monk, but I've heard from many people that a heavy armored tank just feels more correct. And I agree with that. So we're going to see what we have to do to get to ADAC by level 16 using heavy armor. I do occasionally reference the previous high AC video and I have included a link to it in the description if you want to check it out, but it isn't required. There are timestamps so you can skip ahead if you like. Oh, and one last thing. This isn't a full build video. I will only be showing you what I did to reach ADAC by level 16 while wearing heavy armor. So to reach our target AC, I'm using the fighter class with the tower shield specialist archetype. This choice will minimize the drawbacks of using heavy armor and a tower shield as well as give other bonuses that increase survivability, if not your actual armor class. If you don't want to play a tower shield specialist, that's fine. What I show you in this video will work for any class that has access to armor training, heavy armor and shields. You'll just have to spend an extra feat to gain the use of tower shields, or you'll have to use a shield type with a lower armor bonus. The race that we're going to choose is once again ASMR. The wings feat that an ASMR can get at level 10 just makes ASMR the best race for a tank by far. And we're going to choose Garuda Blooded as our racial heritage. I suggest allocating your ability points like this. The strength helps with combat maneuver defense and will allow you to land hits early in the game when damage can be hard to come by. The dexterity bonus will be added to your armor class. 14 constitution is enough since our plan is to get high enough AC that we are not hit that often. And the, the 13 intelligence is required for the combat expertise feat that we'll be taking. As you level up, all of your first four ability points should go into Dexterity. The fifth ability point can go wherever you like, but Wisdom is probably the best choice if you have chosen the same ability point allocation that I'm showing here. Now let's take a look at the feats that we're going to use to max out our AC. Those feats are Dodge, Shield Focus, Heavy Armor Focus, Combat Expertise, Missile Shield, Greater Shield Focus, Wings, and Ray Shield. You can pick up whatever other feats you like, that's up to you. And just as an FYI, Combat Expertise and Defensive Fighting both give significant penalties to your attack rolls when activated, so you should take that into account when you're planning your character. Dodge. You gain a plus one dodge bonus to your AC. A condition that makes you lose your dexterity bonus to AC also makes you lose this bonus. Shield focus. This increases the AC bonus granted by any shield that you are using by one. Heavy armor focus. The AC bonus granted by any heavy armor that you equip is increased by one. Combat expertise. You can choose to take a minus one penalty on melee attack rolls and combat maneuver checks to gain a plus one dodge bonus to AC. Whenever your base attack bonus reaches plus four and every plus four thereafter, the penalty increases by minus one and the dodge bonus increases by plus one. You can only choose to use this when making an attack or a full attack with a melee weapon. The effect lasts until the end of the effect lasts until your next turn missile shield you must be using a shield to use this feat once per round when you would normally be hit with an attack from a ranged weapon you may deflect it so that you take no damage as if you had the deflect arrows feet you must be aware of the attack and not flat-footed damage cannot be deflected from spells natural attacks, or massive ranged weapons. Greater Shield Focus increases the AC bonus granted by any shield you are using by one. 
wings. You gain a pair of wings that give you a plus three dodge bonus to AC against melee attacks and immunity to ground based effects such as difficult terrain. Ray Shield. You add your shield bonus to your touch AC. No enchantment bonuses are added. Of these feats, Missile Shield, <clears throat> the main abilities we need from the Tower Shield Specialist class are the Tower Shield Proficiency and Armor Training. As I mentioned before, you can take Tower Shield Proficiency as a feat with a different class that also receives the Armor Training ability to reach the same AC numbers that you will see in this video. However, Tower Shield Specialist does give a ton of bonus feats, which is important considering how feat intensive this type of build is. Also, it removes most of the penalties you receive from using a tower shield and actually gives you additional benefits for using a tower shield. Tower Shield Proficiency. This allows us to use a tower shield, which provides two more armor class than a heavy shield, which is why we want this for the build. Armor Training. This reduces the armor check penalty that heavy armor imposes on you and increases the dexterity bonus to AC that your heavy armor allows. At level 15, the dexterity bonus to AC allowed by our armor will be increased by four. Mithril full plate armor will allow us a dexterity bonus of three to our AC which will give us a total plus seven bonus to our AC from dexterity. Nothing else from this class adds to AC, but almost everything else that you see here does add to survivability. Now, if you're getting any value from this, do me a solid and hit the like and subscribe buttons. This is an enormous help to the channel and I really appreciate it very much. Thank you. Let's look at our mythic abilities. I took the demon path here, but it doesn't actually add to our AC value. So you can choose whichever mythic path you want and still achieve the same AC numbers that I'm showing in this video. However, if you do take the demon path, there are some demonic aspects that you can use while in a demonic rage that will lower enemy attack rolls, which is practically the same thing as increasing your armor class. Also, if you take the Bit of Fun Ascension, you can gain a Mirror Image type ability to increase your survivability. The only mythic feats and abilities that I found to increase our AC are the Dodge Mythic Feat and Shield Bonus Mythic Feat. The Dodge Mythic Feat gives us an additional plus one dodge bonus from our Dodge Feat. And the Shield Focus Mythic Feat allows us to add our Shield's Enhancement Bonus to our Touch AC. Now if we look at our skills, the only thing we really need here is 3 points in Mobility to gain an additional plus 1 dodge bonus to our AC from Defensive Fighting. Your actual Mobility Bonus doesn't matter, you just have to have 3 points uh, put into the skill and your other skill points can be allocated however you want. While we're here, let's go ahead and look at the bonuses we're receiving from spell buffs. These include Magical Vestment Shield, Haste, Cat's Grace, Reduce Person, and Magical Vestment's Armor. Magical Vestment Shield is giving us a plus 4 enhancement bonus to our shield. Haste is giving us a plus 1 dodge bonus to AC. Cat's Grace is giving us a plus 4 dexterity enhancement bonus, uh, which translates to a plus 2 dexterity modifier for our AC. Reduce Person is giving us a plus 1 size bonus to AC and a plus 2 size bonus to dexterity. And Magical Vestments Armor is giving us a plus 4 enhancement bonus to our armor. 
Okay, so here I need to point out that Magical Vestment's armor and shield appear to be bugged. They should be adding their enhancement bonuses to the enhancement bonuses of our armor and shield to reach a total of plus 5 for each. Instead, they are adding the same enhancement bonus that is already there, giving us a total of plus 8 for each. This effectively nets us 6 more AC than should be possible with this character uh, since I'm using a plus 4 tower shield and plus 4 mithril plate armor. After doing some research, it appears that these spells are bugged for everyone, so you should be able to use these spells to get the same results I'm showing here. However, since this is a bug, it is possible that it gets patched out at some point, which would result in us having 6 less AC than we end up with here. In the strictest uh, sense, using these spells to increase our AC is exploiting a bug. However, I would argue that we are investing more as a heavy armored tank than an armorless tank has to invest. And even with the larger investment and the help of these bugs, we are still ending up with a lesser AC than an armorless tank can get, which really makes no sense at all to me. And because of this, I don't consider taking advantage of this bug to be an actual exploitation and I actually hope that this is one bug that Owl Cat doesn't squash. Heavy armored tanks have it hard enough as it is. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or not. Moving on. There is one last buff that I want to point out here and it is this plus six profane bonus to our dexterity. At the end of Act 4 you will meet a character named Nocticula, who will offer you a gift. Accepting the gift gives you a this profane bonus. However, if you accept the gift and want to take the legend path, you'll have to pass a very high will save later on. So if your plan is to take the legend path, you'll probably want to refuse this gift when it's offered. Now it's unclear to me how exactly the stats that receive this bonus are chosen. I've received the gift twice now and both times my highest stat received the plus six bonus. However, I have read claims on forums from players who say that they were given the choice of which stat gets the bonus when they uh, acquired the profane ascension. Either way, you should get the bonus to your dexterity stat if you followed my recommendations on building your character. The last thing that we need to look at is equipment. Now I've taken off everything that isn't giving us some kind of AC bonus. And the only equipment that is left is this amulet of natural armor plus five. This uh, mithril full plate plus four. A ring of protection plus five. Engraved lucky bracers. And this Spellbreaker Tower Shield, which is a plus four tower shield. Now, if we look at our AC during combat, while defensive fighting and combat expertise are active, we can see everything that we just covered adds up to 77 AC, 54 flat footed AC and 40 touch AC. However, our dodge bonus from the wings feet is not included here because it only counts against melee attacks. I also want to mention here that I missed this in the previous high AC video that I put out. So the final AC and touch AC values we calculated in that video should have been three higher than what we came up with, at least against melee attacks. Anyways, against melee attacks, we have a total of 80 AC, 54 flat footed AC and 43 touch AC at level 16. This requires the use of eight feats or nine if you choose a class that needs to take the tower shield feat and two mythic feats. You may remember me mentioning earlier that our dexterity bonus to AC should be capped at plus seven. 
and as far as I can tell, it should be. This plus 12 bonus that we see here seems to be another bug. Again, even with all of these bugs and the extra feed investments, we still don't get to the same AC as the armorless tank. If Owlcat uh, does remove the magical vestments bug and this max dexterity bug, that will bring our AC down to 66 or 69 against melee attacks, which is of course significantly lower, but still respectable. Obviously, if this happens and these bugs are removed eventually, you'll want to lower your dexterity when allocating ability points so that you don't exceed a plus 7 dexterity bonus. Constitution would probably be the best stat in which to put your redirected ability points. I'm sure that you can obtain other bonuses from gear and abilities that I have not come across, to increase your AC even higher than I have shown here. But this video shows you what is possible with the relatively normal gear that most players will come across in their playthrough. You know, nothing super rare or hard to find or anything like that is, is used here. I really hope that this video helps you out when you're building your heavy armor tank. And if you know of any other ways to increase armor class as a heavy armor tank, be sure to let the community know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. It really helps me out and I truly appreciate your support. This has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.